Coming up on this episode of the Jeep Talk Show, Matt Felderman's here, marketing manager at American Expedition Vehicles. That's right, AEV is on the show with Jeep Talk Show. This week we get a follow-up to a story related to Hurricane Dorian, and we're going to hear why Apple and Jeep are no longer talking to each other. Jeep Life, well, Tammy breaks some news to us, and it might be mixed blessing. Tony and I take the gloves off and go head-to-head in a debate over RC Jeeps. Nikki G introduces us to his imaginary friend Bill, and we've got some more show to fill in there as well, so stick around. You're listening to a 4x4, 4x4 Radio Network Podcast. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Talk Show with Jeep Mama. Are you sure? Josh. Yeah, I don't think so. And Tony. I think that's a huge deal. So sit back, strap in, and brace yourself. Hey, this episode of the Jeep Talk Show is brought to you by Extreme Terrain, off-road outfitter for YJ to JL Wrangler parts and accessories. Stay tuned to hear how you can win $5,000 in Jeep parts for your Wrangler, courtesy of Axle Off-Road Lighting. This episode is also brought to you in part by Nexen Tire. Nexen Tire has been around for 77 years. Nexen has made passenger and SUV tires along with street performance for many years and most recently have started making off-road tires. The Nexen Rodian MTX is an amazing, long-lasting off-road tire with its all-around fantastic performance in the mud or rocks. Find out about find out more about Nexen tires by going to Nexen Tire usa.com right now that's nextentireusa.com whether you are upgrading your jeep suspension swapping axles changing trannies or just modifying your transfer case one component of your jeep almost always demands attention that's the drive shaft it's the critical link in your drive line and a sensitive one at that a little off here a little off there if you're not careful you could find yourself in big trouble somewhere where you can least afford it and that's why you should put your trust in the biggest name in drive shafts that's tom woods Go to 4xshaft.com to find out more. That's 4xshaft.com. It doesn't matter if you have a Jeep, want a Jeep, or never driven anything but Jeeps, this show is for you. Josh, Tammy, and myself are here to inform and entertain you while we talk about, what is it, Tammy? Your last time. Jeeps. (laughs) Hi there. I am Tony, and I have a long list of things to install on my Jeep, and I just keep buying more shit to put on it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> been there done that hey i'm josh and just when i was getting acclimated to summer bam winter skips fall and now i'm freezing hey i'm tammy also known as kiss my ass i'm out of here or the shorter version jeep mama well i just think that was uncalled for tammy <laughs> oh that that wasn't that wasn't meant for you guys tony oh okay i, I think that's much better i don't yes. believe it but i think it's better yes local jeep news national jeep news and news from around the world it's this week in jeep this Week in Jeep is, of course, brought to you by Amazon.com. Has winter snuck up on you two, and now you're left wondering where your favorite beanie is and just who the hell is hiding the ice scraper? Regardless of how prepared or not you are for colder weather, Amazon has what you need to make it through. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and press the big Amazon button there. You'll be taken right to Amazon's world of online shopping. While there, anything you purchase to beat the winter blues will give the show a few cents of support, while costing you absolutely nothing more. If you like what you hear, have gotten any benefit from what we're doing, well then please consider giving back. That's jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and look for the big Amazon button. Hey, and thanks in advance. Well, it's back from the dead, people. Hurricane Dorian was the most intense tropical cyclone on record to strike the Bahamas and is regarded as the worst natural disaster in the country's history. From what that storm uh, produced, it came many stories of harrowing disaster and a massive cry for humanitarian support for those affected. Then there was that iconic picture framing the epitome lack of common sense. Oh, you know the one where someone thought it would be a good idea to park their Grand Cherokee on the wet sand during a hurricane to do some <clears throat> storm watching. Now, the pictures went viral, as did countless videos of random people climbing up on the roof during its last moments for a quick selfie and a claim to fame being photographed with the ill-fated Jeep. Many were in an uproar as thor- authorities had no plans to risk themselves or their equipment to try and recover the vehicle during Dorian's landfall essentially sealing the Jeep's fate. Oddly enough, the person who drove that Jeep out onto the beach during a hurricane wasn't the owner. I'm personally glad to hear the Jeep owner wasn't actually that stupid. Now, it turns out the actual owners of the Jeep loaned it to a cousin because the weather had turned too dangerous for him to ride his motorcycle. 
This ever so brilliant cousin drove the vehicle onto the beach to get video of the sunrise over the crashing waves. Ah, how poetic. The Jeep obviously got stuck, though, and no towing service in their right mind was willing to remove it as Dorian approached Myrtle Beach. Then the doomed Jeep quickly became a TV and social media sensation, and one man even serenaded the Jeep with amazing grace on bagpipes. <laughs> the, Jeep, the Jeep, surprisingly enough, did not get washed out to sea and was, believe it or not, eventually recovered after Dorian passed. It is, of course, complete and total loss, and though the owners wanted to buy it back from the insurance company, the company refused, stating the Jeep was too much of a health risk to ever be occupied by humans for any length of time. Now, that hasn't stopped the owners from capitalizing on the Jeep's fame, however. They explained to the insurance company the role the Jeep played in the hurricane coverage and that their goal was to help the Bahamas through the Jeep's popularity. So, the company gave the couple a year's grace period to use it just for that. The red Jeep, now dry and set up for display purposes, will appear at the Pennzoil Auto Fair at Charlotte Motor Speedway next week. Its owners are using the Jeep to raise money for Dorian victims in the Bahamas through a GoFundMe account with all donations going to UNICEF. Oh, that's really nice. That is. I, yeah, really I thought cool. so too. Kind of a, uh, you know, making lemon lemon uh, lemonade out of lemons, that sort of thing. Yep. Yeah. So, I I got to I got to say <laughs> you have to wonder what the motivation was for the guy uh playing Amazing Grace on bagpipes because I know. <laughs> because who in their right what Scottish man in his right mind is going to wear a kilt when a hurricane's approaching? <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> Ach, it's a bit breezy down there. <laughs> this, this, this breeze feels nice. <laughs> My jock itch is really uh, going away. <laughs> well, if you are one who talks by using emojis, well, then your vocabulary, thank God for the rest of us, just got smaller. If you've listened to the show for any length of time, you've undoubtedly heard me touting just how much I have gone out of my way to ensure that I or anyone in my family never, ever, ever owns a single Apple device. As a former DJ and producer, I have a laundry list of reasons that I use to avoid their products like the plague. That being said, I couldn't be happier for all those who do have Apple devices and use them and the iOS system to, uh, and our iOS app rather, to download and listen to the show. Just know that it would probably be easier and sound better on an Android device instead. <laughs> but I digress. This week, Apple did something that, on the surface, may have a lot of people in the Jeep world very upset, especially those who can't form proper sentence syntax without using smiley faces, eggplants, and finger gestures. <laughs> but I, for one, as well as the entire Jeep Corporation, couldn't be happier. In its latest iOS update, Apple has removed Jeep from the list of words that generate an emoji that looks like a small blue utility vehicle. In other words, Apple clearly has no idea what a Jeep looked like. I mean, uh, it's not like Jeep has more or less used the same overall vehicle shape for over 75 years or anything. And in Apple's infinite wisdom, authorized what looks to be a super accurate representation of Fiat's smallest vehicle or a smart car to represent the iconic off-roader. Jeep is known for relentlessly protecting its trademark because the name is so often used as a generic term for, off -road, for an off-road vehicle by people who are too ignorant and lazy to learn how to speak <laughs> using proper terminology. It's interesting to know that there is literally not a single other automaker's name who launches a car-related emoji, but it does show up as a selection when you type things like car, SUV, or automobile into a message. So why did Jeep get picked over, say, Lamborghini or Ferrari? Uh, who knows? But while Jeep is making the incredibly smart move to distance itself from stupid, immature, and overly generic emoji associations, Ford is on the other side of the spectrum and decided to go all in. Earlier this year, they have submitted a pickup emoji that designed that is designed to the Unicord consor Consortium. Yeah, sure, them, those guys, which uh, currently doesn't even recognize one uh, or uh, even has a pickup in its lineup and has made no indication it ever plans to. Smooth move, Ford. Good move, Jeep. I so when I was I, reading along there, I read Unicorn Consortium. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I just, I have an apple, Josh. Sorry. <gasps> it's I all know. right. For people that want the apple and uh, the iOS operating system, it's, it's, <laughs> it's perfectly fine. It's just not what Josh and I would pick. Um, now everyone else in my family is an Android. Um, oh, that's interesting. I just typed in Jeep and that little blue thing. It never was that little blue thing before. And Josh, can I ask you why you picked eggplants? I know eggplants. No. Funny. I got <laughs> Do you me, know? Got me giggling. Yes, no, I know. No. That's why I okay. picked eggplants. <laughs> I was just wondering because you said you don't use emojis, so just, I, it just doesn't mean I'm, I'm not. I'm not hip to he's the. He's aware. <laughs> he's aware of the social media stuff. He's okay. just not involved in it. Okay. <laughs> just checking. 
<laughs> hey, if you've got a news, a news tip or response to any one of our stories, uh, as long as it's not eggplant related, just be sure to let us know by phone or by email and just head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and find out how. Could you imagine if Josh was on social media, there'd be people out there just hammering him with uh, all these little emojis. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right now I, well, I think those who have found me probably will I, uh, i'm not uh, going on for another week i swear well hey coming up later in the show we have an interview with matt belderman marketing manager at american expedition vehicles that's right aev is on the show with us here in just a little bit that's the brute people isn't it yeah it's gonna be real cool not not, not the cologne the the oh, <laughs> jeep tj no, conversion the who make champagne <laughs> no yeah, there you go different completely different you're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. And you know, we're always asking you to go check out the 4x4 Radio Network. If you haven't, well, you need to, and for a good reason. There's a ton of great shows there to check out besides ours, and be sure to tell your friends about it, too. We've got something for everybody at the 4x4 Radio Network.com website. How about on the Trail Podcast? Trail Chasers is even there. Center Steer Podcast and Dan and the 4x4 Podcast putting out great content. All of our shows there are free. And it's all in one stop, all at 4x4radionetwork.com. We'll see you there. Hello, JTS listeners. On this week's Wrangler Talk, we're going to be covering lockers and the different types of lockers on the market. So first off, most Jeeps, unless you have a Rubicon, do not have lockers in them from the factory. This is what we call having open differentials, meaning that one tire is free to move at a different speed than the other tire on the opposite side of the axle, which is very important when having a Jeep just as a daily driver, mostly driving it around on pavement where there's a lot of traction. This type of open differential is mostly important for making turns because when you're making a turn around a corner, The inside wheel will spin at a slower rate than the outside wheel, which could be problematic if you had a locker engaged at this point. So a locker is a mechanical mechanism in the differential that when engaged or quote unquote locked links the two wheels on each side on one common shaft, meaning that when the locker is engaged, both tires must rotate at the same speed regardless the amount of traction that each tire has. So you can see why this would be very beneficial to you if you were off-road and started losing traction or kind of limited traction where you're at out on the trail. So also it might become very important if for say maybe one tire isn't touching the ground anymore. So as we can see that lockers can be very useful in an off-road condition, there are a couple different styles of lockers out on the market. And the most two common lockers that I see being used in the off-road community is the most common, which is the Eaton E-Locker, which comes standard on all Rubicons, and also the ARB Air Locker. And the Eaton E-Locker, since it comes out standard on the Rubicons, it's a very tried and true, proven, reliable locker. And these lockers are in by the name, electronically actuated by providing a 12 volt power source to a solenoid that engages or disengages the locking mechanism located in the differential. And the main benefit of having an Eaton e-locker is it's just a very simple system. It's only comprised of pretty much a switch and the locker itself. So the 12 volts gets provided to the solenoid and it engages or disengages it. So The second most common locker out on the market is the ARB air locker, which is uses compressed air to actuate the locking mechanism in the differential. And ARB lockers are some of the strongest lockers on the market. And also they have probably one of the best reputations out there too. However, there is one kind of big downfall to air lockers, and that is if you spring a leak in one of your airlines or inside the differential housing, the locker will no longer engage and return to becoming an open differential, kind of similar to the style that comes stock on all sport Wranglers. Although ARB air lockers do require more components and also at the same time can lead to more issues while you're out on the trail, There is also another major benefit of having an ARB air locker is that you're going to be installing a air compressor. So you would be able to use that air compressor out on the trails to air up 
your tires or depending on the rating of the compressor that you get, you might even be able to run air tools from it, which, you know, running a impact gun out on the trail could be very helpful. So finally, there is one last type of locker out on the market, and that is a mechanically actuated locker. And that is mechanically actuated by a cable that runs from inside the Jeep down to each of the differentials. And the most common mechanical locker out on the market is the ox locker. And the main benefit of having a mechanical locker is, well, that it's mechanical. You don't have to worry about supplying it with any electricity or air to engage or disengage it. It's just a simple cable that runs from the inside of your Jeep all the way down to the locker. Very simple. And also another main benefit is for some reason if that cable does break or something happens to the actual, you know, box where you engage and disengage the locker, Ox does provide an alternative mechanism that you would just screw in. It's a plug or a pin that you insert into the differential housing and it make sure that you have your locker fully engaged the entire time or it would be fully disengaged the entire time. So, you know, each locker works in its own way. However, they all serve the same purpose of connecting both tires on the same solid axle, forcing both wheels to spin at the same speed. And that's what, what we're really looking for when we are out on the trails and we need that locker to get out of the situation that we're in. So I'm not saying that any locker is, oh, this one's so much better than the other one. It's really kind of depends on your preference. However, I can say that having onboard air out on the trail is very useful. So might be a way that you want to go getting an ARB air locker. So this concludes this week's Wrangler talk. And just remember, if you have any further questions, feel free to contact us at jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. And we'll be happy to answer any more questions that you have for us. And just remember, please stay tuned for next week's Wrangler talk, where we're going to be covering sleeving your axle tubes and the process behind it. So thank you for listening and just remember to stay tuned to next week's Wrangler Talk. Now, I'm sure everybody here, uh, Tammy, maybe not Tammy, but everybody here probably has seen um, uh, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. And yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, I think, this, I think that was the episode that Spock died. Oh, uh, spoiler alert. I was going to say, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they, and interestingly, you just mentioned about the guy playing bagpipes, the amazing grace. And, yeah. and that was in that scene when they were going to launch Spock out the, the, the photon torpedo tube uh, into the, the atmosphere of the planet where, where he could burn up. Of course he didn't. He, he landed just and lost survived. everybody under the age of 32. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a beautiful i didn't i didn't recognize the song when i saw that in the movie but it was a just a a, a heart breaking uh, emotionally churning scene with that amazing grace on the bagpipes and tammy you've had a amazing grace moment in your life haven't you uh yeah this week um you know i, I all i shared with you all um my job saga where I asked for this month off, and they said, yeah, perfect timing. I asked two, two months ago, perfect timing. Um, we're we're going to move you to a new position. We need you to help organize a shop. And I'm like, oh, cool. So they were going to hire someone for my new position. Well, back in September 19th, they called me into the office and said, we've hired someone for your new position, and you're going to train them. Um, unfortunately, we don't we're rethinking that other position and it's most likely not going to be there, but we're trying to find you something else. Well, Tuesday, they called me in and said, Hey, um, we're going to pay you through Monday. And I'm thinking, Ooh, you're giving me an extra day's pay. Cause I was leaving on Friday. And they, they said, no, we want you to leave today. You no longer are working here. So I was fired from my job. Um, very angry right now, and I'm sure this trip will be good for me, but five other male employees were able to take paid time off and kept keep their jobs, but not me. So anyway, I'm now unemployed, 
I'm looking at the silver lining of this. This means I don't have to rush back to um, get to my job. My ki- Everyone's like, well, what about your kids? My kids think this is so awesome for me to do. They're happy for me because I'm doing something that I wanted to do for a very long time. And they they understand that this is my passion. So it's been a real stressful two weeks for me with being my job. Um, I had some female health issues, which I won't go into here because I'm sure you'll all be plugging your ears. Um, I've worked that out. And Neil, my Overland partner, he bought a 1980 Grand Wagoneer at a um, salvage yard for $500. He got an AMC 360 motor, put it in. Everything was working fine. And then all of a sudden he had timing chain issues. Went to buy a new timing chain and Napa kind of messed up and gave him the wrong one. It totally shot metal throughout the whole engine. He found two other engines and kind of mixed and matched and had been having problems for two, three weeks. He spent countless hours trying to do this rebuild and if anyone who's rebuilt an engine or even rebuilt their jeep knows it's a long tedious process and he has had problem after problem after problem and um finally i mean he was supposed to leave to start heading to virginia on tuesday he just left at eight o'clock tonight maggie may is running um, however, there's some suspension issues. Um, the, he believes the pinion angle is off, so it's been shaking. And he has, um, I think he was going to put in new heads. So he just put that on hold. A great Jeep friend gave him his vehicle that he uses to overland. He's in a, um, gosh, what did he say? A Range Rover Discovery 2 right now with no heat driving through the snowstorms of Colorado right now. Um, But the plan is he's going to meet me tomorrow, late tomorrow evening, early Saturday morning, and we're going to go to the expo. We're going to go to up to LT Wright Knives, and we're going to do the first part of the TAT. We're going to get to Colorado, and I'm going to help him um, fix Maggie. And hopefully it'll take us two days, and then we'll get back on the road. Um, as you all know, my I had issues with my ball joints and my pinion flange. That's been fixed. Um, and I took my Jeep to Adrenaline Off-Road for one last final check and with Jeff from Adrenaline Off-Road. And there's an awesome video, especially for all you newer Jeepers or maybe a Jeeper who's not familiar with their Jeep, their engine, and the nuts and bolts. He spent three hours meticulously going over my Jeep, bolt by bolt, filling the fluids that needed to be filled, and he explained what he was doing and what you need to look for. This is a super great video, a pre-check and a post-check when you take your vehicle off-road. It's, I mean, he showed me all the nuts and bolts and the um, jam nuts that you need to check. Um So then we also realized Neil actually ran out of money buying all these new parts. So I sent him an online Visa card. Well, when you're in, you know, bum F Colorado, they don't know how to manually put in credit card numbers. So Neil was running down to a quarter of a tank of gas and he's like, oh, I got to find another gas station. So we're, we're crossing our fingers. Some places can use it. Some places don't. So be careful if you ever use those online Visa cards. They don't always work. So we are persevering. We are pushing through. And that's what Jeepers do. You know, we adapt to the road. We can change our plans. And that's what this adventure is all about. So Neil, I'm throwing a tent in my my Jeep, so Neil and Jersey, his dog, will have a place to sleep, and um, we'll we'll just keep doing what we planned on doing. So I'm really excited. You all can follow along on my YouTube channel when I have um, data or whatever you call it coverage. I'll be doing live YouTube videos. I'll be sending in audio for the Jeep Talk Show, and I will be doing Facebook and blog updates. So any of my social medias, just go there and you can find the latest. So 
heading out probably tomorrow night. I'm really, really excited. So this is the last episode that you're going to be on uh, recording uh, with Josh and I. And, and, and when are you planning on being back? I mean, I'm not asking for a specific oh. date. Is it like uh, mid-November, end of November? Yeah. Mid, mid-November, before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, so, but I get to come back, don't I, Tony? To do live? Well, Tammy, we'll uh, see. Uh, I, the, uh, the Jeep the Live thing, are still out on that. The Jeep Live thing isn't working out. And since we already have a replacement for Wrangler Talk. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I couldn't help but think that as you were reading that, I went, wait a minute. We got somebody well, new for Wrangler Talk. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, double whammy, huh? We couldn't lose Tammy. I mean, everybody's uh, like, you know, Tammy this and Tammy that. I Personally, I get sick of it, but they like you. Right. It's like, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. <laughs> exactly. Uh-huh. <laughs> Tammy with the timely reference. <laughs> no. Yeah, there you go. So, no, I think this is going to be great, and and you use the word adventure because uh, uh, people don't like <laughs> shit. <laughs> when they use it's, shit, kinda, it's not it kind of it kind of turns people off. So you're you're going to be going through a lot of shit on this on this trip, right. Tammy, which is I'm part sh- of the adventure and and right. overcoming, which is exactly what you're having to do right now with this the, this crap with the the job and then uh, not doing what really stepping up and doing what they should have done. Uh, and uh, honored their their commitment, or at least told you uh, why it wasn't right. going to work this way, trailing you along. So right. uh, you got to overcome that, and you're gonna you're gonna overcome this uh, and anything that happens on the uh, uh, all, all on the road on your trip across America. You'll be a stronger Amen. person for it. Yeah, I agree. And, and I, it, I think yes, definitely stinkier. Um, <laughs> the the thing that I you know you got to look at everything as you know, a positive, you know, like Neil was is so bummed that he's not in Maggie May right now, but I'm looking at it as like, this will be really cool because I'll get to get in there and see the valves and the, all these things he was talking about. The Henway, to, ask him about yes. the Henway. <laughs> yeah. The, the Henway. I think, I think that's what the problem is, was that Henway. Um, and he's got to fix the leaf springs and the pinion angle. And, you know, I'll get to, to actually see this. And, you know, not just hear about it. So right. uh, it, makes it, a, it makes a big difference when you can see how it right. all fits together. Right. So I'm, I'm really excited and I'm really excited to see all the Jeep talk show folks that I'm going to be coming across along the way and all my YouTube folks that I'm coming along the way. They, uh, it's amazing guys. So many, there's a guy in um, Utah who listens to the show and he invited us to stop by, and he's going to do a Dutch oven dinner for us oh. and show us the trails around where he lives. So, you know, that's to me, that's what this is all about is going out and meeting the real people, the real Jeepers. You know, it's, it's going to, I just love the Jeep community, and it's going to be so much fun. I, I think you're going to just, uh, you're going to be uh, invigorated uh, emotionally. Uh, after you right. get back, oh, yeah. you, you'll be tired emotionally and uh, and physically, but you're going to be invigorated emotionally from all the folks. And, and and I'm personally really, you need to keep that recorder handy, Tammy, because oh, yeah. I want to hear from these folks that you guys are, are talking to. Uh, I, I want to hear, you know, uh, what they think about the the show, what they think about your trip, just all kinds of things. And I just love having voices uh, other than our own on the show. And I- I'm hoping I'll you get lots of those clips that we can play. Yeah. Well, I keep we'll several in my head. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of several voices in your head, coming up later in the show, we're going to hear from the voices in Nikki G's head. Perfect segue. Giddy up, Tammy and Neil's great Jeep Trans American Tour. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here we go indeed <laughs> Yeehaw. Uh, tammy's going to be uh hearing that over and over again as she uh, pulls out the driveway here we go well, i thought you were gonna say giddy up <laughs> hey i want you to go over to jeeptalkshow.com right now and look for the paid subscribe button subscription button whatever <laughs> and click it damn it uh you know this show is worth uh, two dollars and 12 cents a month to you just do do it. Tom Woods has been doing only four-wheel drive, drive shafts, and slip yoke eliminators for 20 years. As an American family-owned and operated company, they provide solutions trusted by the weekend wheeler all the way up to the guys get rock, crushing rocks at King of the Hammers. If you have a Jeep, Tom Woods Custom Drive Shafts has a solution for you. They're using their gold seal universal joints developed in-house. You can count on the strength of your drive shaft as its most used and abused points. 
If you're concerned about warranties, well, it doesn't get any better than their Gold Seal warranty. The Gold Seal Universal Joint Brakes, well, not only are they going to replace the joint, but they're gonna also going to repair any consequent damage to the shaft itself. Tom Woods loves Jeeps. In fact, he's got three highly modified Jeeps, so he understands your passion, and so do his employees. Tom Woods custom drive shafts are always shipped, completed, balanced, greased, and ready to install. They always pay attention to the finest details. And with their 1310 series CV type drive shafts, they send reduced head bolts for ease of installation and a service tool for regreasing the center pivot point on the CV. If you've ever destroyed a drive shaft, you know just how important this is. Tom Woods started the company to create the very best drive shafts possible, and this model has continued through 20 years of service in the off-road community. Those same principles are being passed down to the next generation of off-road enthusiasts through his son, Sean Wood. When you research Jeep drive shafts, there is a reason Tom Woods Custom Drive Shafts comes up time and time again. You can trust them with one of the most critical parts of your drivetrain. Visit Tom Woods Custom Drive Shafts today. Just go to www.4xshaft.com today. And be sure to use the discount code JeepTalk18-1. That's JeepTalk18-1 at checkout for your discount. Nexon Tire, a leading global tire manufacturer, announced that its Rodian MTX tire was recognized with an award in the transportation category at the 2018 Good Design Award. The Rodian MTX was highly recognized for its distinctive designs of the machine and beast dual sidewalls. Versatile for on- and off-road driving that offer customers the freedom to choose their designs according to preference and vehicle type. Rodian's MTX solid and aggressive design is also suited to provide durability and comfort with its patented noise-canceling technology. The tire is strategically designed to avoid repetitive tread block contact that significantly reduces tire noise. The MTF the MTX offers three pie carcass and three layers of sidewall protection that is designed specifically to offer more stability and durability when hauling heavy loads. The Nexian Rodian MTX comes in many different sizes, but for us off-road types, the Rodian MTX comes in 33, 35, and 37-inch diameters. Check out NexanTireUSA.com for specific diameter and wheel sizes. To round out 2019, one of our show sponsors for this month, Extreme Terrain, has teamed up with an off-road lighting manufacturer, Axel, to give away a $5,000 shopping spree on ExtremeTerrain.com. Here's your chance to win it big and take home the Jeep parts accessories of your choice from Axel and ExtremeTerrain.com. To enter, head over to the Axle brand page on Extreme Terrain site today and every day to maximize your chances of taking home the grand prize. Enter daily, enter often, and who knows, maybe you'll win something nice from our friends at Extreme Terrain and Axle. Even though Axle is known for LED lighting, one finalist can select products from any category on ExtremeTerrain.com. No purchase necessary. See official rules, details, and restrictions. Find the sweepstakes sign-up link today in the Jeep Talk Show notes for episode 406. So, Josh, I, I don't know how you feel about this, but I recently saw a, a very uh, exciting video of a uh, overlanding uh, Jeep JK, I believe it was, on a very narrow path uh, on a mountainous terrain, uh, and it was just so close to the edge. And upon Oh, I like those like extreme yeah. wheeling videos. Guys get some good shots and stuff like that. I mean, that's, that's, that's great. It, 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 know, it very much, and it very much looked like a, a drone shot, except it was very stable. Oh. And that was what clued me in to it not being a real Jeep. And I'm not saying uh -oh. I'm not saying it was a, a renegade or one of the new Cherokees. I'm talking about it was one of those remote controlled vehicles. It pisses cool. me off anytime somebody puts a remote controlled off road vehicle on my feed. It, I don't see the point. Well, I mean, yeah, there are some real cheesy ones out there, but there's also some really cool ones out there, and I'm myself am a bit of an enthusiast. All right, we got a disagreement here, so uh, let's uh, let's put the gloves on. Josh, you ignorant slut. <laughs> How in the world could you, I mean, you have a real Jeep. Why would you want a toy to play with? Get in your, your real Jeep and drive it around. Take videos of your real Jeep. Okay. Um, I'm not about to jump my real Jeep. <laughs> no, I mean, I've, I've had my, uh, the front end of my Jeep off the ground a little bit before uh, going a little too fast uh, here and there. But man, there is nothing like taking a nitro powered RC truck to like a BMX park and blasting that thing 45 miles an hour off the top of a jump. It is just, ah, 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 ah. 
But I don't see the point. I mean, these things can cost hundreds or even a uh, thousand or more dollars if if I'm if I'm and reading correctly. How much did you spend on your atlas? <laughs> Ag- <laughs> again, I can take the atlas and do things with it. It's not. Some, I can take an RC truck. It's and not do some. Things with it's it. not some little toy that does has no purpose except to be looked at. And and don't try to fool me that it's an art that it's a, a real vehicle. I, you know, if you're if you're 14 well, years old or 12, I understand it. But why in the world would a grown man go through all that trouble, put all that time and effort into your Jeep and take it off road? Well, I mean, there's guys who do that as well. I mean, but you got to look at that. Look at it this way. This is just another hobby. I mean, I've got several. I've got too many hobbies, to be honest with you. And RC is one of them. And there's so many facets to it. And it's so intriguing. And there's there's so much that you can you can do to express your your artistic side as well. You see these guys who are are literally making like scale replicas. I mean, they put so much attention to detail into the craftsmanship and and the the finite attention to detail that goes into the just the customization of these RC cars, which make them look like in probably another hobby photography. Uh, as an actual real Jeep in a situation like, uh, you know, precariously positioned on the edge of a cliff. Um, you know, there's just so much cool aspects to this that have a positive outlet uh, for somebody that I-, I can't see how you can possibly come up with anything negative for this. Yeah, it's just negative for me. I don't like it. I don't want to see it on my uh, You're my a negative timeline. Nancy. That's <laughs> and I, I especially don't like the idea of being fooled. Uh, or the attempted, oh, see, that's the attempted what it was. Being You're all butthurt because you got fooled. Uh, it, no, actually, I didn't. I called out. That's, that's a nice uh, RC, and I'm thinking to myself, why am I seeing this? I, I don't want to see this. I <laughs> it's mean, it's a Jeep. It's off road. It's it's you know related. I just I just can't believe somebody has that much time and money to put into something that that you can't drive down to Wendy's and get a burger in. Well, I mean, if you put two on, you know, one underneath each shoe, one and you had really shoe. good balance. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the RC cars would be great if you were making a a, a a 1970s Godzilla movie. You could drive them around while Godzilla stomps on them. <laughs> Look, I, I got a, I got a buddy, um, Jeep buddy. He sold his Jeep. He's looking at getting back into Jeeping again here soon. But uh, in the meantime, he has um, has picked up this you know RC rock crawling uh, uh, hobby, and he's sharing it with his son. and And they have built on the side of his house this rather extensive little course that they have. And I'm not little by any stretch of the imagination. It probably takes you a good 15 minutes to go through it on its easiest lines. Um, This is very, very impressive. They put a lot of work into it, and that's what this is. I mean, there's so many other things that you could be doing, sitting on your butt watching TV, going out and screwing around with people and getting into trouble, you know, that sort of stuff. But there's this positive outlet that has so much coolness to it and fun and everything else, and you can get other people involved and family members and stuff. And like I said, there's just so much positive to it. I'm having a hard time finding why you are so negative about this. Ah, uh, just uh, <laughs> you kids get your RCs off my lawn. That's all I got to say. You're listening to Jeep Talk Show, Talk Show. the number one Jeep podcast at my mom's house. From around the world. Or from your city. And sometimes just down the street. Howdy, neighbor. It's the Jeep Talk Show interview. All right, boys and girls, it's time for another Jeep Talk Show interview. Uh, we're going to be talking with uh, Matt uh, Felderman. is a marketing manager at American Expedition Vehicles. He's been with them for a little over seven years, but has been in the aftermarket industry for the past 20. Matt likes uh, Philly sports, metal, rotary-powered race cars, and raccoons. I like raccoons. I think they're really raccoons. cool. The little, f- <laughs> the little fingers and everything. Matt and his wife just had a baby boy back in June. Congrats. Named Chase. Uh, so his life is pretty much consumed with either work or baby stuff right now uh aev's website is www.aev-conversions.com matt thank you very much i didn't know about the baby congratulations and my god is your wife gonna just beat you senseless for not being there available for the ba- the baby tonight because you're doing an interview well thank you um and fortunately chase right now is asleep right above me so but yeah we're in good shape now, you don't have the baby winched up uh, for a pulley system or something when you say above you. You must be in the second floor. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I had to catch up with that. I had this picture in my head like, don't do that to the baby. That's, that's going to traumatize <laughs> yeah, him. Let me for clarify. The- <laughs> <laughs> 
So well, let me I, let me just start with you on the brute. Uh, I think everybody knows, uh, even if they don't know AEV, they they've seen the brute, uh, the TJ modification, uh, the 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 filler Jeep uh, truck uh, between the Comanche from '92 and the the Gladiator that just came out. The the only Jeep truck you could get was really this conversion. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it all started with the TJ brute. Um, that was a offered as a turnkey conversion where we would actually do the conversion for you and you could buy the whole thing brand new. Or we were also selling the the TJ Brute kit as almost like a do-it-yourself option where you could buy it as as a kit and, you know, actually do it yourself or have a four-wheel drive shop do it for you. Um, So that was the TJ Brute. Then things got way more complex when we came out with the Brute Double Cab based off the four-door JK. That was a completely different animal, and we only offered that as a turnkey conversion. But I was still curious if the if the uh, the brute conversion was available, and I went over there to the website maybe a month or two ago and was looking to see about you know is the is the TJ kit still available, and it's not, is it? No, no, that's um, that's just something that that kind of ran its ran its course, and um, you know the demand. It was an expensive kit, so the kits were ten thousand dollars. A lot was in the kit, but you know, Jeeps started getting less and less expensive and people stopped justifying spending twice the amount of money <laughs> that they spent on the Jeep itself to turn it into a truck. So it, it just, you know, it's one of those things that everything has a life. Yeah. Now, Tammy, you were mentioning, uh, you weren't aware of, uh, the, uh, the, the truck conversion for the, the TJ, no. were you? No, I had no idea. I'm on the website right now. Yeah, I, I didn't see it on there, but if you if you do a uh, search for the Jeep Brute, uh, okay. much like the Cologne from the seventies, uh, this was I actually no this, actually this was a lot better than the Cologne from the seventies. It was a very <laughs> nice kit uh, and oh, wow. beautifully done. So if if you wanted a Jeep truck, you had to make your own basically, or or go to uh, AEV to have them build it. That's right. Yeah, and we what really set us apart is we were able to make this kit look so factory. Because we, this is when we started getting into steel stamping. So this then grew into things like bumpers and hoods and, you know, all the different products that we've put out since then. This was kind of the infant stages of what AEV was going to become, you know, in the years to follow. Oh, and I was on the website recently, and speaking of those bumpers, and those bumpers look just like what you're talking about. They look like they're just factory bumpers, but they have all these things that you can do to them. Uh, and they're winch bumpers, and you can actually drop the winch down nice and low in there, and uh, just absolutely beautiful bumpers. And I, I think you just uh, gave us the the clue as to why you're able to make bumpers that look like factory bumpers. Yeah, yeah, it's a completely different uh, manufacturing process than what the aftermarket was used to everything was your traditional um press brake manufactured bumpers which there's nothing wrong with that but you're lim- you have limitations on the aesthetics that you can achieve and you know it's always going to be heavy um but when you stamp steel you're able to use less material to achieve the same strength so How do you- our jk bumper only weighs about 92 pounds without a winch but if you made that same bumper, you know, in a traditional press brake method, you'd be looking at a 200-pound bumper. Mm-hmm. How do you stamp the, the metal? Is it like in a it's machine? A, it's a really cool process. So it's, um, it's basically a huge uh, CNC cut tool, which uh-huh. is basically the, the mold of the part that you're trying to make. And they uh, run a piece of sheet metal in this tool and it's just a big like 50 ton press that comes down and presses the metal into the shape that you're trying to get and that process of smashing that metal is actually what makes it stronger think of a Um, coin it's really an yeah it's an awesome process yeah it's like if you ever put a coin on a railroad track exactly Uh, right if you ever done that those coins and those machines where it, yep, like, yep. It just presses it into into shape. Right. If, you, if you put enough weight, enough hydraulic pressure and weight against right. it, it the, the metal will just flow into that form. So uh, that's really cool. You know, I'd like to get a, a, a Jeep uh, induction uh, a cooling hood uh, made for my uh, my Cherokee. Could you guys help me out? 
<laughs> you need one, Tony. Unfortunately, that so you just touched on you just touched on the biggest drawback to that form of manufacturing is it is extremely expensive um, to start up. The tooling costs to make something like a hood are astronomical. So you better make sure that you have a really strong business case to pay back all that tooling, um, or else you know, it's going to be a losing product. So that, that's really the downside. And that's why really we're the only company still doing it. It's a big gamble for companies to take. Yeah. I mean, it's a much easier just to get the metal and cut it and bend it and weld it and, yeah. you know, and grind yeah, it. And there's, and, and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, it's just, you know, a different style. That's all. No, no, but it's it's really cool. I, I mean, I think because you know, whenever you get a Jeep, and, and sorry, Jeep, but the the bumpers that come on the Jeep are really made more for uh, crumple zones uh, to help uh, save you. Uh, and you know, and, and we buy a Jeep, we die like men and real women. <laughs> we want real bumpers. So if you can get a, uh, it's, but the factory look is nice. It's just not a a heavy duty quality bumper, in my opinion. So if you can get a heavy duty quality bumper, but have that factory look, I mean, to me, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And with the JK, we took it one step further. And because of our, uh, the program that we did with Chrysler on like the call of duty, um, edition Wrangler and the Moab edition Wrangler, all these Wranglers that utilize, uh, front bumpers and hoods that were manufactured by us. Both of those products were actually submitted and passed Chrysler. Chrysler's crash testing. Oh, it's so our front wow. bumper, yeah. So our front bumper is actually Chrysler crash tested. Um, our hood is Chrysler crash tested because if you're in an accident, that hood doesn't crumble; it's taking your head off. So, you know, all those things are so important, and we are fortunate enough that you know, with Chrysler being a customer of ours, essentially, we we were forced to go through these tests, and it really it it really elevated our. Um, you know, kind of, it, it raised the bar of, of our standards for sure. Yeah, I forgot you guys did have, uh, you do have a relationship with Chrysler, and uh, uh, I, I didn't realize that you guys had gone through all that. That's really cool. So, um, yeah, we had to. Yeah, no, oh, absolutely. I mean, if you're going to be doing that, do you do you guys actually sell? Uh, uh, does Chrysler actually sell your bumpers? Is it is it considered aftermarket for the? I forget the store that Chrysler has for aftermarket Jeep parts. You know, I think they don't anymore. But I think with JK, I want to say you could actually buy our bumpers and stuff through their, through their accessory catalog, but it was hard to find, and it really wasn't something they promoted. They really, they really were um, getting our stuff out there on the vehicles. It was like every year they would do some you know, special model in the spr- you know, spring oh, special okay. of some sort, and they'd either put a hood on it or a bumper, something to dress it up. So that's really how they were um, getting our products. Gotcha. Now you mentioned hoods. Uh, did you guys have a, a hood to help uh, re- remove the heat from the engine compartment? Don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that is a product that came about out of necessity. Uh, TJs were notorious for overheating on the trail, um, at least you know where I lived, and you know I'm sure any place with elevation, it was a common problem. Mm-hmm. So uh, we stamped a functional heat reduction hood where, um, you know, it wasn't just a cool looking hood. We actually, you know, thought about it and used, you know, air to our advantage, you know, the way air moves over a hood when the vehicle's going down the road and, and whatnot. And then we carried it over to the JK, did the same thing. Um, and pretty much it's been a, a ongoing trend. JL has a lot of hood options, so I'm not sure if you're going to see a hood from us um, for JL, but, um, you know, we did one for the JK and then also for the heavy-duty Ram. So you were talking about um, your hood was crash test rated, which I never really thought about it. Like all these other hoods out there, I'm taking, I'm guessing they're not. Yeah, it, you know, the, basically what it is, is just, putting in crumple zones. If you open up the hood of your, you know, if you do have a JK, uh, if you open up the hood and you look at the bottom of the hood, you'll see like these little ditches, you know, going horizontally across the hood. Well, those are, I think there's three or four going the, the width of the hood. Those are your crumple zones. That's where the huh. hood's meant to fold up. Well, yeah. it kind of makes you um, uh, rethink trying to get a hood that look just for it to look cool. You know, and I guess if right. you're going to do that, you should really consider 
looking for one with the crumple zone. Oh, you you have to do your homework. I mean, uh, yeah. especially if it's that, uh, if, if it's a shared vehicle, you don't want to put your your family in danger yeah, yeah. whenever uh, your wife or husband's driving your Jeep. And that's something more important. I never would have thought of. <laughs> yeah, and more importantly, um, along those notes, please, if anyone's listening and are putting their high lift jack on their hood, that just makes me cringe. Um, that is so dangerous. Yeah, um, I that just doesn't feel so safe. So yeah, all me. those things, they're all realities that you have to consider. You know, all this stuff looks cool and it's real fun, but there's definitely safety involved. So everything that we make, safety is always a, a key component in our engineering process. Well, you know, with the new transparent aluminum uh, windshields that Jeep's putting on the uh, the Jeeps now, that, that uh, high lift shouldn't be a problem when it comes careening <laughs> towards your windshield. <laughs> That's a Star Trek reference, right, Dan. Right. <laughs> Surprised they still haven't figured out a way to make that windshield thicker. Still, they're... We've already broken windshields on jails. It's so disappointing. Oh, how did how did that happen? Just regular just rocks, just just rocks on the highway. It's because right. their windshields look flat, and I don't think it's super thick. I don't know. It used to happen all the time on JKs. Um, so you think it's the yeah, design? It's just, that it's, just it's, not... a, it's just a Jeep thing. It's I right. think it's because it's so flat towards the the the, the forward. It's it's sitting very vertical. So the right. rock has less of a, uh, a way of, of, of going like off. bouncing off. Yeah, bouncing like, off, and it just hits it with enough energy to, to crack it. Yeah. Right. So one of the things that I noticed on your website is you don't just cater to the Jeep. I think you guys are, and correct me on this if I'm wrong, I think you're famous uh, for Jeep modifications uh, and Jeep products, but uh, you guys uh, uh, carry products for a line of vehicles, don't you? We have. Uh, we have always been a Jeep company. We always will be a Jeep company. But Jeeps have their limitations, not so much as in terms of what they can do, but things like what they can carry, what they can tow, uh, how many people they can comfortably carry. You know, there's limitations as far as that goes. So um, pretty much when we maxed out as big as we could get a Jeep with our brute double cab, we we needed to go somewhere else. And that's what kind of on the whole uh, heavy-duty RAM project. And then with heavy-duty RAM, we had a lot of half-ton customers that said, hey, what about us? And a lot of things carried over um, where we could share tooling, mainly the front bumper, so it made sense. And then the biggest, really the biggest milestone for us, if you look at a business achievement, is our recent uh, collaboration with Chevrolet on the ZR2 uh, Bison which is a outfitted Colorado that comes from the factory uh, with our front and rear bumper, a whole skid plate package, um, a number of AEV designed and manufactured products. And, you know, they put our name on the truck and it's been a great partnership. So, yeah, we're pretty di diversified nowadays. Oh, that's really cool. You know, when you said you, you, there's some things Jeep won't do, I started to hang up on you, but I'm glad you clarified <laughs> <laughs> about number of passengers yeah. and carrying capacity and stuff. And I, I'll give you that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, it's just one vehicle can't do it all. And, you right. know, now with the growth, with the growth of the overlanding uh, scene, you know, people want to carry more stuff. They want sliding trailers or slide in campers for their truck. They want to tow trailers. You know, they need bigger vehicles. So now I think we have a really good assortment, kind of something for every niche out there. And I think some of the folks out there uh, may not know uh, that you guys have a whole line of parts. It's not just bumpers, but you've got suspension systems. You've got, uh, we mentioned the heat reduction hood. you got stuff for the interior, for the powertrain, recovery, roof rack, uh, all these things, uh, even a snorkel. I, I didn't even know that you guys carried a snorkel. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, we, that's, that's another thing that, that makes us a little bit unique. Um, there's a lot of great companies out in the aftermarket, um, but uh, they really only specialize in one, maybe two things. We take a very holistic vehicle approach where we, we look at the vehicle as a whole and just because we want to add a front bumper doesn't mean we don't have to address something else on the vehicle. So really our formula is meant to be used as multiple components all working together as one. You know, so the suspension is meant to get you maximum clearance 
you know, when used with our bumper or our high clearance fender flares, you know, whatever the case may be. So if you use all our stuff, everything works beautifully. And it's, it's really like it left the factory that way. Mm -hmm. Now we've mentioned uh, the JK. Of course we mentioned the TJ, but that's, uh, that that's long ago now, but we mentioned the products for the JK. You also have products for the JL. Yep. JL and gladiator. Um, obviously JL, we had about, you know, a year head start on. So we've released uh, two different suspensions right now uh, for the two door and four door JL. Um, we have a couple different uh, JL specific wheel designs out. And I say JL specific because we always manufacture our wheels to the vehicle, not the bolt pattern. So a JK wheel has a different offset, different center cap hub bore. You know, it, it's really a specific wheel to the JK. So we did the same thing for JL and Gladiator. So if you get our wheels for JL and Gladiator, they're going to fit properly. Um, we have snorkels on the way uh, to work with um, all the fender flare options from the factory, which do matter. Um, they do sit higher on some models and lower on others. And uh, then obviously bumpers. Bumpers have been a challenge for us because um, we've been experiment, experimenting with a few different things that, you know, and new, we're trying to innovate. And with that, you know, sometimes it takes time and that's unfortunately where we've been. So um, bumpers we should have out early uh, 2020 and um, just keep cranking out products. And there's a lot of stuff in the pipeline too. 2020 is going to be a really exciting year for us. Well, that's what I was, I was just going to ask. Can you share with us any new products you're coming out with? Um, well, yeah, we certainly for, there's really no secret to our method. Um, you know, if you take a look at, at JK, that's uh -huh. pretty much going to be your recipe for JL, you know, a nice swing away tire carrier with, you know, the ability to hold accessories like our, our tire carrier and rear bumper assembly on the JK, you have the ability to attach our, uh, 10 gallon fuel caddy to the back right behind your spare tire. So it's out of way and you know, it's barely visible and that holds 10 gallons of fuel. Hmm. Um, so you have all these cool accessories that now people are going to be able to use on the JL and gladiator. There's so many things. I don't even know what the limit is on that. I can't wait to see it seem uh, this year, you know, all the cool stuff that's going to be out there, but gladiator is going to be a big vehicle for us. And same thing, we have to get all those core components out first before we start getting the really fancy stuff. So Gladiator, definitely um, look for some suspensions this year, front bumper, rear bumper, um, snorkel for that as well. Now all the what? core components this year. Now, Tammy, so that would have been something that would have been perfect for your trip across the country. Oh, I'd I know, forgotten I about this, this fuel caddy thing. This thing is really cool because it, it, it carries a lot of fuel and it's all behind your rear spare tire. So it, it doesn't stick out. It's actually, you know, tucked in nice between the spare and the, mm -hmm. the back of your Jeep. So it's it's really a cool option. I had forgotten about this. I'm glad you mentioned that, Matt. I, I saw it earlier and I went, oh, yeah, I remember that thing. I'd love to have something like that on my Jeep. There, the, yeah, it's one of the it's one of the neatest pro products I think we make. Um, you know, one of the most I don't know. It's an easy conversation piece. You know, it's something unique. And yeah, on a JK, that's you know, for argument's sake, that's a half gallon, a uh, half tank of fuel. Yeah, uh, I mean that's significant. You, and when you start getting the uh, uh, the other uh, plastic bottles that you can hang on, those things are really small. I mean, uh, two two five gallons maybe, and then you got to start buying several of them. And uh, 10 gallons, yeah. that's a lot. I mean, that that would get you a long way. Uh, you, you could feel confident that you had enough fuel to, to get from, uh, from point A to point B to, or find that next gas station. Hell, it might even be good during a hurricane evacuation because uh, <laughs> there's so many people that run out of yeah, fuel. Sure. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and the best thing is it's not inside your vehicle. So they're not jerry cans leaking and, and oh. smelling up the inside of your vehicle. So dangerous. Your car through, <laughs> you know, it's all outside. So, <laughs> people are enjoying the ride that. because of the smell of fuel. They're going, oh, this is not bad yeah, at all. <laughs> <laughs> So what about um, Overland type um, tent things for the Gladiator? Is, is there um, any talk we, of that? 
Uh, not so much for, I, I wouldn't say that we're going to get into the tent market. That's a very specialized um, skill. And there's a uh-huh. lot of really good manufacturers out there that I don't think we could, it'd be a long time before we could do anything to compete with them. Uh-huh. But for the glad, what, what I do see us doing is some kind of um, bed rack or something to, to support a variety of aftermarket tents. Right. So re- really what we do is we want to provide the end user we want to get them as close to their goal as possible. So if someone's going to order a Gladiator from us, we want them to have the ability to have that as close to what they want it to as possible. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I definitely think a lot of people are going to be putting tents on the back of those things. So it really only makes sense to, to at least explore the possibility of a bed rack system, right. which is something we've always kind of been into. Now, we, we, didn't know, even, we didn't even, I'm sorry, we didn't even cover the, the ordering the vehicles from you guys. Uh, can you can you give us a, a quick Reader's Digest uh, a summary yeah. of, of that? Yeah, the real the real quick story with that is uh, we have partnered up over the years with about a hundred dealerships across the country. Um, obviously, they're all Chrysler dealerships at this point, but um, we we partnered up with them and they're authorized a the dealerships. So you can go into one of those dealerships, sit down, and order an AEV vehicle the way you want it. Um, so the vehicle gets built at the assembly plant. So if it's a Wrangler, it gets built in Toledo. It leaves Toledo. It gets shipped to our facility in Wixom. We do the conversion, and then we ship it to the dealer that ordered it. So the customer comes and picks up their car and signs the paperwork, and it's fully warranted and lifted, and, you know, it could have a Hemi V8 in it if they ordered it. Um, you know, all set, ready to go. Oh, they that's cool. I had yeah. I had no idea it was so turnkey like that. So uh, you, yes. you literally can yes. go to the dealership, figure out what you want, how you want it built. It, it gets built by yes. the factory. Get in the, you get the options put on it uh, at, at your place, and then they just go and pick it up at the dealership. They, they don't have to. Uh, the only problem with that I can see would be the money and the waiting. And, yes. and I would think the waiting would be worse than the, the first one. <laughs> yeah, and, and, yeah, and you're right. It, it's, it's not for everyone. Yeah, it is money and the time. That's definitely the two negatives to that. But there's people out there that, you know, they're at a point in their life where they've been down the road of building vehicles over time. And, and you know, they're able to now go out and just buy it instead oh, of build it over absolutely. Time. Yeah, so, you're definitely so, going to have a market for so that. We wanna, yeah, so we want to cater to them. But then everyone else out there, like the rest of us, you know, they... Uh, that's what we sell all the parts for. So they can build their they can build their clone of what we're doing over time. Oh, yeah. So if they want you know, if they want it, one of our Rams, but they want to do it themselves over time, they can. Or if they want to go to a dealership and you know drive one off the lot, they could do that too. Well, uh, let's mention what vehicles uh, are uh, available for this. So you mentioned the Ram, of course, the Jeep, the the JK, and I assume the JL and the Gladiator. Uh, what other vehicles are, are available for this turnkey service? Uh, really, the the last one is going to be um, something based off of a enhanced version of the ZR2 Bison. Um, so basically, the same thing that we're doing with Jeep and Ram and and all these other vehicles, we'll be doing it to uh, the ZR2 Bison as well. Obviously, that already comes from the factory with a ton of our stuff on it. So we're basically just going to be getting it up on bigger tires. Um, we have some cool high clearance fender flares coming out for it, so it'll be a cool vehicle. But um, but yeah, that's really right now. I think that's about all we can handle. <laughs> well, it sounds like quite a, quite a cool deal. I really it like is. that idea of being able to go to the dealership and just order what you want, and it comes to you, and you drive it away, or or maybe you you pick it up and then you head off road, just straight off road because right. it's ready to go. And and that's just a, a really yep. cool idea. I had no idea that you guys actually did such a uh, really almost a door to door service yeah yeah it's um it, it's and it's grown a lot over the years um you know at first it in its infancy you know we only had about a dozen dealerships across the country but now we're almost in every state and bigger states like texas california you know colorado we have a number of dealerships in those states but yeah we're we're pretty well represented throughout the country if somebody was interested in getting one of these uh, uh, AEV uh, vehicles, uh, you know, at a dealership, is there a place like on the website they can go to find out what dealerships are part of the yeah. program? 
Yeah, uh, we do have a uh, dealer locator right on our website that you can go and put in your city, state, zip code, whatever you want, and it'll bring up the dealers around you. Or if you have something, you know, something specific in mind. So say you want to have our HD RAM packages, which we call it the Prospector XL. Um, that's our biggest truck. Say you wanted a black one that was crew cab with a short bed and you lived in California, you could call us up and we could tell you where the closest dealership is that has that truck or something close. Right. You know, and kind of, have to kind of walk someone through the process. So I don't know if you guys uh, do themed vehicles, but I'm thinking this would be a great themed vehicle for, for one of these uh, turnkey uh, vehicles that you set up. And it'd be really simple to do. All you would have to do, we could do a Jeep talk show themed vehicle, and all you'd have to do is, uh, is set the infotainment system to only play podcast uh, episodes from the Jeep talk show. So no matter what they did, even the GPS coming up, nope, sorry, you got to listen to this episode first. I think that would be a wonderful idea, and we could even provide stickers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? I can I can pitch that, and I'll, I'll circle back. <laughs> no, no, you've been there seven years. Let's see if we can make it eight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Matt, you know the kids love the uh, the uh, the social media. How can uh, how can how can the, everybody reach out and look at pictures of all these beautiful vehicles and parts and stuff that you guys sell? Listeners will definitely want to check us out on Instagram. Uh, that's definitely where we post up all our most recent photos a lot of photos from out in the field different trips that we've taken so there's a ton of great content on there um you can just look us up at aev conversions um we're also on facebook and we do have a youtube channel with a bunch of videos that we've done from trips all around the world so definitely check us out there excellent and of course you can always go to their uh, website which you're going to have to do anyway to check out these beautiful bumpers and all the other products uh that they have uh, that's aev and the little di- dash or minus sign conversions.com of course we'll have that link in our uh, show notes for this episode so you can always head over to jeeptalkshow.com and just uh, click it there and uh, jump over to their site matt i can't thank you enough for making time for us and uh all this great information i, I learned a lot uh, more about aev than what i had known previously so yeah. job well done yeah mission accomplished uh, <laughs> yeah. thank you so thank much you. for having me Hey, thanks again to Matt for uh, coming on the on the show and taking the time to talk about AEV, American Expedition Vehicles, and they are doing some really cool stuff. I didn't know they had so many products, Tony. This this is a, a that company very, that, uh, very yeah, I had a whole other facet of this company who I've had the utmost of respect for for years, uh, and now they just went up a notch on the list. So, really cool stuff. Hey, do you have an idea for a guest? We want to hear what you have to say. Do you work in the off-road industry, or maybe you know somebody who does? We'd love to have them on the show. Maybe you yourself would like to be a guest on the Jeep Talk Show. We'd love to have you to tell your own Jeep story. Everybody's got one. We want to hear yours. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact right now and share your idea for our next great guest. Who knows? Could be you on the next show. All right, Josh and Tammy, I'm a little uh, I'm a little excited about this next guest that we're going to have on next week. Uh, oh, Tammy, you're not going to be here. Uh, we're going to be talking. the show. <laughs> We're going to be talking to Mike from Timken. Now, you guys know Timken from all the bearings, the, especially the wheel hub assemblies that we yeah. got to replace regularly on our Jeeps because of all the, the best ones right there. Oh, it is the best ones. It's the only thing I'll put on my Jeep. And, uh, you know, I reached out. I said, you know, eh, they probably like who, what? Uh, go away, little boy. <laughs> but I reached out and uh, they're excited to do the interview. So we'll be talking to, uh, talking to Mike next week from Timken. Way cool. From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G, and uh, I'd like to take a second to welcome Bill to the the crew. Uh, I don't know if they told you this or not, Bill, but it was Tammy's job to feed me. So uh, let's get <laughs> snappy with the pizza rolls. In all serious, Bill, uh, welcome to the crew, and I. Uh, Got a lot of good, a lot of questions. Uh, one of them is, I'm interested in your opinion on Syria. Yeah, I prefer Cocoa Puffs myself, but anything with sugar will do. All right, boys and girls, uh, I'll chat at you later. I, I really can't say girls, I guess. Uh, all right, dudes, I'll chat at you later. And remember, 
we could easily avoid the zombie apocalypse if we just tie everybody's shoestrings together before we bury them. Think about it. It's a good plan. <laughs> Nikki oh. G out. I saw a meme one time, uh, uh, how to zombie proof your house. It was uh, uh, those uh, exercise treadmills. They had them all around the house. So the idea was the zombies would walk up to your house, get on the treadmill, and never be able to go forward. <laughs> It was funnier to me than it was to you guys, obviously. Jeep Knight, call up for help. Season came to an end. 2019, we are done, wrapped up in the books. Ladies and gentlemen, we raised a lot of money closing out the season for Alyssa Magro and Willing with CF. That said, go fund me, Willing for CF. Look it up. Take care of that girl. She has been through some battles. She could love some support. The Jeep community comes together and does that. Guys, on another note, talking to Diesel, Kingdom Crawl, new episode, new show coming out on Prime Video, also on YouTube, is amazing. I want you to get together with him. I want you to talk to him. I want you guys to check Diesel out. I'll send you links. But, long story short, they're up with Rock Crawler, they're hitting trails, they're doing amazing things, and I'm blown away. It's a good show. It's a good story. And Diesel, by far, would be a hilarious, entertaining, maybe I have to bleep a lot of stuff out, person to interview. Uh, he's down with everybody in the NC area. He's down with everybody in the West Coast area. He's down with everybody everywhere. Check it out. I'm going to sign off because, again, I'm drinking. That's what I do. <laughs> Love the show. Shocking. Looking forward to next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the promotions you do for me. Build my event. It was huge. Jeep Talk Show. Number one show in the area. In the world. <laughs> there it is. There it is. At my mom's house. Just say it, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no, glad we could help out. We always try and, uh, and help out the good causes and stuff like that. So I mean, if, if we always say at the uh, towards the end of the show when we're doing our uh, our willing wear segments. Uh, you know, if you've got something planned, by all means, let us know. We're always uh, happy to get behind a good cause. Yeah, and uh, you can always promote your own stuff by calling into our voicemail. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. And uh, you'll see all the ways that you can contact us and uh, how to leave a voicemail about your event or uh, really anything you want to you want to share with us. So I thought it was a uh, I thought it was a great idea to have uh, Vin Diesel on the show, but I don't know how we would uh, <laughs> how we would contact the the young man and uh, uh, find out about you know Fast and Furious number six hundred thirty two. Uh, talking about something else. <laughs> oh, was he? Okay, well, because I I would I would love to interview Vin Diesel. Tammy. Well, that Jeep does not have an exhaust leak like mine. No, it does. <laughs> <laughs> it does now. It didn't whenever uh, when I recorded that. Uh, oh my God! You know, but th- the great news is we're expecting it to be much cooler temperatures, uh, like seventies uh, during oh, the no. day uh, on this weekend because a, a cold front's coming. Well, you guys probably have. Uh, maybe you've experienced, Josh. Uh, that cold front that came through. Where, uh, yeah, it was 32 yeah. when I got into the car this morning. There you I go. Oh my goodness! Yeah. yeah, I'm not kidding. So by the time it gets here, it'll be about 70 out. So uh, that's that's the difference that it takes to what makes it when it gets here. Of course, the Gulf keeps things pretty warm down here in uh, Southeast mm-hmm. Texas anyway. But uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm hoping I'll actually be able to get some things done uh, to the Jeep this weekend. Very nice, very nice. I know you've got a, a laundry list of things and and, uh, and items. Uh, that are due to go to go in and on that thing. So, uh, yeah, I hope you make some progress, man. I, myself, however, won't be doing too much in the garage this weekend. I'm going to try and get out of the house and, and up into the woods a little bit, uh, to do some trail runs, and uh, and probably even uh, uh, plant some freedom seeds, uh, otherwise known as doing some target shooting. Ah, so, uh, I was thinking something completely different. Oh, well. You know, uh, when you have the fake ID and if, <laughs> if she asks and... Uh, <laughs> Now I'm going to be heading out uh, towards the Oregon coast, heading out that direction. I'm not going to be quite that far. I'll be up in the uh, the mountain range just before the coast range. And uh, off of Highway 6, got a couple of uh, nice little spots that we like to go out to. 
and do, do some uh, trail runs, uh, maybe before, maybe after, kind of all depends on uh, the people I'm going up with um, and, and their time frame. I'm wide open, so kind of be uh, at the leisure of other people's schedules this weekend. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to have some fun, uh, put the Jeep through its paces a little bit, uh, get it dirty and get it muddy, and, uh, and come back and clean everything up. Uh, after all the crap that you went through being sick, this is all, uh, it'll be nice to get outside, get some fresh air, and uh, Man, you know do what? something That's- that isn't laying in bed. It's really kind of hanging on to me, too. I I've, uh, took a trip up to Seattle this last weekend and uh, even um, uh, got a chance to spread the word about the Jeep Talk Show a little bit up in the, up in the uh, Emerald City. Um, saw, my, uh, saw some old stomping grounds, a uh, neighborhood I grew up in. Haven't been up there in probably close to 25 years. A um, lot has changed. A lot uh, hasn't changed. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, it was really cool. Um, but I just have not been able to get on top of this cold, really. As far as you know, tightness in the chest and just lower energy levels, and so even right like right now doing the show tonight, I'm I'm like you know constantly yawning off the mic because uh, I just do not have the energy still. But uh, yeah, nonetheless, uh, I am going to power through it and uh, have some fun this weekend. Come hell or high water. Well, you know, you shared a picture uh, with me and I think Tammy on uh, on the Hangouts uh, chat where you uh, you had, you were sporting the uh, the Jeep Talk Show uh, polo shirt, the one that oh, yeah. has the embroidered logo uh, on uh, on your chest there. And boy, mm-hmm. that black and white really st- it really stands out. Did you did you actually speak with somebody about the Jeep Talk Show, or was you were you just putting cards out? Because I'm kind of wondering, uh, you know, if anybody saw the shirt and said, what what is Jeep Talk Show? I had one person ask me, what is Jeep Talk Show? And uh, they were not a Jeeper. They were just curious. Uh, oh, and you told so them to go was, to hell. Get out. Oh, well, it was like, you know, a little move. bit of a waste. Of time. I was <laughs> like, well, you know, this is what we are, what well, we you do never and everything. Know. Oh, you know, shaking their head. Oh, that's really interesting. I've got no interest in all that. Right. You know, it's like, okay. I put on that fake there's smile. There's three minutes of my life I'm never getting back. But, uh, but no, I handed out some cards. Um, I was kind of disappointed. Uh, you know, down here in the Portland metropolitan area, there is a massive Jeep scene. And I know that Seattle and the surrounding areas is a much, much bigger city and everything. Uh, but I was disappointed to not see as many Jeeps as I was hoping to see, and especially customized ones. Saw a couple of JLs up there. Saw one Gladiator. Um, seen a lot more Gladiators down here. And of course, there's a lot more customized and lifted Jeeps out here in Oregon than there is up up there in Seattle. So I don't know what it is. Uh, it's something about the Portland metro area. We are just Jeep centric down here and uh, over here. And uh, I, I think the other parts of the nation just aren't. I went out to the Midwest earlier this summer. Hardly a Jeep was seen across three states. And uh, um, it's just it's such a culture shock when I go somewhere else and I don't see Jeeps. You know, I see a lot of Jeeps every day going back and forth to work, uh, especially on I-10. And I have yet to see a Gladiator. The only Gladiator, oh, wow. yeah, the only Gladiator that I have seen in person was whenever I went to uh, Big Bear Lake, California, and we were going over to Don uh, Alexander's house, and uh, I, one of his neighbors had had a brand new uh, Gladiator. That is the only one I've ever seen with my own eyes. Oh, uh, I saw a uh, I saw one lifted just the other day earlier this oh, week, uh, like cool. on thirty fives, and it must have been thirty fives, maybe even thirty sevens. I mean, it was to this day the biggest Gladiator I've ever seen. So I mean, and and brand new. He hadn't even have uh, plates on it yet, and and already had a bunch of modifications done to it. So I, I just thought that was just you know cooler than you know what but uh but yeah man i I, i'm kind of disappointed they're not uh, they're not as popular elsewhere well it may not be a popular thing it may be a a cost and a actually having them to sell because uh i was talking to somebody uh, oh it was the uh we were talking uh to uh uh the j bar uh the gentleman uh, last week and uh, he said they they uh, at their dealerships they are gone uh, almost as soon as they get there, so wow. Um, they it, it may they may not be very many of them, and they may be gone. And I'm just not seeing them on I-10. I mean, people do go other ways to work. So I forgot where it was I saw this, and and it's kind of unrelated to anything we were just talking about, other than the Gladiator. But somebody out there is making a modular bed-mounted camper top for the Gladiator, and it looks like something out of a Batman wow. movie. Wow! <laughs> no, it is <laughs> really, really freaking cool. Yeah. yeah, and and apparently it's modular in the way that you can like completely customize the thing. Um, but of course, if you can, if you want to know the price, it's kind of one of those things. If you have to ask, you can't afford it. 
Uh, so I didn't get I didn't get a chance to go as far as uh, seeing what the price tag on it was, but uh, by the looks of it, it was probably about as much as with the Gladiator itself. Well, you know, the first thing you have to do is uh, buy the Gladiator, and then you've got to kill somebody to take their uh, uh, their monthly check so that you can afford to buy the accessories. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> no, I'm I'm there with you. Uh, I think I think the Gladiator would be a, a real fun vehicle to have. Uh, I just don't see it as a an off road vehicle. I mean, certainly overlanding, but uh, not uh, not a Jeep replacement. Not, not a, a rock a, crawler. At yes. least not not yet. Not Let's in get this these things on the market for a few years. Let's see some aftermarket, and uh, and we'll see what happens. Well, I mean, I guess if it had 40s on it, you could uh, you could hey. rock crawl with it because you're ah, you're some rock wells under there. We're good to go. Yeah, your your <laughs> departure angle wouldn't wouldn't matter at that point. <laughs> Well, would you like to join in on the Campfire Side Chat? We'd sure love to have you. Go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and find out all the ways you can reach out to us and join in on the fun. Hey, Jeeper. It's Mitch. It's time for your weekly Jeep weather report. That's where I suggest places to go topless this weekend. Since we read left to right here, we'll start in Portland, Oregon. It will be cloudy all weekend with a chance of rain. 65 on Friday, 57 on Saturday, and 58 on Sunday. Just leave your top over your shoulders for accessibility when it rains. If you want to check off your yearly polar bear swim early while jeeping, then you can go topless in the forecasted hottest location in Canada this weekend. Victoria, British Columbia is 54 on Friday and 53 on Saturday and Sunday. To make it a true polar bear drive, it will be raining off and on all weekend. That's a three for one deal, a polar bear drive in a jeep while topless. Now, if nipply days and getting wet isn't your kind of topless jeeping, then I have a place for you. Virginia Beach, Virginia is in the temperate neutral zone for homeo sapiens. 70 on Friday, 72 for Saturday and Sunday. Mother Nature is providing clouds for your topless Jeep Instagram pictures. Just make sure they are within policy to post or just send them to us directly. If clouds aren't your thing and no tan lines is important to you, then go topless in Mesa, Arizona. It will be sunny with 85 for Friday, 89 for Saturday and Sunday. If you have any suggestions or want to know your local Jeep weather for the weekend, just reach out to me at jeeptalkshow.com forward slash contact and send me a message. It's always a great weekend to go topless, if you're brave enough. Just go topless responsibly. Now, let's get to some events from around the world, maybe even in your neck of the woods. Let us know about an event that you are planning or are volunteering with, involved with in any way, shape, or form. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact, click and fill out our Wheeling Wear form. And that information comes straight to us, we'll get it out to the masses. And hey, as we are approaching holiday season, the show season is sort of wrapping up, and uh, well, it's pretty much all about charities and and that sort of stuff here coming up soon. So uh, if you are involved with some sort of holiday season event and you'd like to get the word out, by all means, now is the time to get that information to us uh, so we have plenty of time to get that out there and promote it. Coming up November 8th through the 11th, we have the California Four-Wheel Drive Association presenting the Panamint Valley Days. This is a really cool event. It's happening down in Trona, California. We also have uh, the um, Big SEMA Show, the Specialty Equipment Market Association, uh, happening in Las Vegas, Nevada, November 5th through the 8th. And the Jeep Talk Show is going to be making an appearance there in one form or another. So we'll be having more details about that as we get a little bit closer. For more information, more events, and links, please visit the JeepTalkShow.com website for this episode. Get all the information you need. That's it for the show this week, my fellow Jeeper. Be sure to join our efforts to dominate social media by commenting on, liking, and sharing our posts. And as always, thank you for listening to the world's most downloaded Jeep podcast. And did you know that as you lie in bed, fast asleep, and then jerk awake, it's just your body thinking that you're dead, that's all. It's the brain's way of making sure you're still alive since the heart rate is so slow during sleep after all. Sweet dreams. <laughs> Is that really true? Yeah. Oh, I'm guessing since 2010. Even though Axel is known for LED lighting, it's one of the finalists in select products from any category. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> you know, my mom told me that um, when I was a baby, I think I was under six months old, my, uh, my dad uh, uh, took me out on a bicycle in the, the basket on the front of the bicycle, and uh, something happened, and he, he, uh, the, the bike went down, and he dropped me on my head. And I, and I think this is what's causing the issue of me being able to read. So, 
I was I was thinking that when you said that. Were you dropped on your head, Tony? She uh she's she said that he was <clears throat> he was just so scared and and horrified about you know what he had done and you know I'm, and I was fine. Were you fine? I was fine. 